Good morning, everybody. Oh, Chester A.R.P. Church Devotional Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Glenn Davis, your host. We'll get started in just a second. Cheers First Kings chapter 12. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living breath. All right. Well, thank you so much again for being with us as we get started this morning. First Kings chapter 12. The kingdom is divided. Solomon's kingdom divided after his son Rehoboam refused to listen to the wisdom of those who had counseled his father Solomon. And when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, What portion do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Look now to your own house, David. So Israel went to their tents, but Rehoboam reigned over the people of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah. The king, then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was taskmaster over all the forced labor, and all Israel stoned him to death with stones. And King Rehoboam hurried to mount his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. And when all the Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called to him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. When Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, to restore the kingdom of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying to, Reh- say, saying, say to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, thus saith the Lord, You shall not go up to fight against your relatives, the people of Israel, Every man returned to his own home, for this thing is from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord and went home again according to the word of the Lord. So we have this story here, Rehoboam refusing to listen to the advice he had received from those who had counseled Solomon, his father. When Israel came to him and said, Your father was harsh upon us. Lighten the burden from us, and we will follow you as your servants. And Rehoboam refused to listen to them, and he said, My father was harsh. I'm going to be even harsher. I'm stronger. I'm mightier. I'm more um, authoritative than my father. And when he began to impose the harshness of his rule upon them, the people of Israel rebelled. They said, We don't want anything to do with you. In fact, ten tribes say, We are rebelling against you because you have not uh, listened to us, and therefore we are denouncing our part in King David. Now this is significant because we often read this as Solomon's son's folly and the result of them being raised in uh, the home of Solomon, which was devoted to other gods, and Rehoboam specifically refused to listen to the wisdom of the advisors and therefore caused this division among the kingdom between the northern and the southern kingdoms the kingdom of Judah and and the surrounding areas, and then the kingdom of the other tribes. It was split between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. But the significance of this part of the story is that the people of Israel rebelled. In fact, we, we saw that they rebelled. They said, we have no part in David. They decided they didn't have any part in the people of God, in the kingdom of God through the the one David, which is the one with whom God had made the covenant to be the head over his people. Uh, whose household would always be in leadership. And so the people uh, of the ten tribes rebelled against Jerusalem, rebelled against uh, the will of God, rebelled against the the rightful heir to the throne. And when they said, we don't have anything to do it, they go off and then they go find Jeroboam and make him king over them, uh, over themselves. And so they decide that they want to have a, a different kingdom. And then we're told later on that they have been rebelling to this day. Um, there is a, a significance to the fact that these people rejected the rightful ruler over them. The divine right of kings was indeed given to Rehoboam by virtue of the fact that he was the son of Solomon and the rightful heir to Solomon's throne. Now, Rehoboam was unwise, and Rehoboam was harsh, and Rehoboam was foolish in his refusal to listen to the wisdom of the counsel of those who had counseled Solomon, but also in his refusal to be to have compassion on the people of Israel. He was a very impulsive leader and one who refused to listen to the demands and to the the needs and to empower the people to be his followers. He was very much at fault. 
But the people themselves said we would rather not be a part of God's people. The ones that God has specifically said, bless, we'll go off and do our own thing. And I think that's where the significance really lies to a lot of us in this passage in the modern era. So many people who claim to be Christians, maybe you're one of those people, but so many people who claim to be Christians, and I I see this all the time as a pastor, who choose intentionally to withdraw from the church for whatever reason, the pastor preaches too long, or they're all about money, or people aren't caring for people's souls, or people don't care about the needs of other people, or people aren't like me, and they, they go off and do sinful things, etc., or somebody hurt me, etc. We have all kinds of reasons, but ultimately what it is is it's our desire to withdraw from the people of God and do our own thing. And when we do that, we have to be very careful. We should be very careful because when we do that, we put ourselves in a very difficult position, a position of rebelling against God's will for his people. God's will for his people is to be a part of his body. This is what we see with Israel willingly rejecting uh, the king that God had put over them and saying, we're going to do our own thing. Now, we could say they're justified in that, in our understanding of the text, but they are going to be held accountable for their rejection of God. We see the same people doing the same kind of things in the modern era with reference to the church. They willingly reject the church and the oversight of the church over them because they want to go off and do their own thing. And I pray that those who are doing that will return. I pray we learn from the lesson of the Israelites. I pray that we're encouraged to walk with Christ and stay with his people more fully. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you next time. You can.